So criteria A focuses on the topic, the research question, and the methodology. So in order to get the highest level, five or six marks on criteria A, the students need to meet the following strands. So they need to firstly identify and explain a research topic and show the purpose and the focus. So when we talk about the, the purpose of the research question, the student needs to explain why it's worthy of study, why it's important. Now the focus of the research question, what that means is, is that the student stays focused on the research question throughout the entire essay. So that means that every section should start by saying, in order to answer the research question, I will. Uh, this piece of evidence supports my conclusions of the research essay, of the research question in this way. The conclusion should be directly answering the research question. They also need to make sure that the research question is clearly stated. So they can't just talk about it in vague terms. They actually need to state the research question, clear and focused. That's referring to making sure the research question is narrow and answerable. And lastly, the methodology of the research is complete. So they need to find a range of relevant sources. In the past, students had to use both primary and secondary sources. Now students only need to use secondary sources, but they can use primary sources as well, but it is not essential. But this is the important part of this criteria, and this is where many students fall down. Students need to discuss what the evidence or what is the sources that they are using and why they are valid and reliable. So for example, if they want to use GDP, they need to discuss why they have chosen nominal GDP or real GDP or GDP per capita or GDP per capita with purchasing power parity taken into account. They need to explain which one they chose and why. Why one of those is more reliable and valid than the others. Then they also need to explain where they got that data from. Did they get it from the World Bank? Did they get it from the IMF? Did they get it from Wikipedia? And why did they choose the World Bank, IMF? Or Wikipedia. So they really need to have quite a, a thorough and clear discussion of their sources and why they have used them. Another example, if they're going to use an, an interview and if they're going to interview um, the manager of a company, they need to understand that the manager of that company is only going to speak about that company in positive terms. Of course they are. So students need to understand there is inherent bias associated with that and they need to be able to make the reader aware of that. So explaining the sources is quite important for criteria A under the methodology and, and this is where students are actually quite weak because they don't really have that experience in the, in the economics classroom. So students will come to you, they'll come to you with a, with a topic, with an idea in mind. And this is my biggest piece of advice, is ask the students before they even start to finalise their research question, before you even start to talk about the methodology. The first question has to be, can you find the data? And students always say, yes, I absolutely can find the data. But my biggest piece of advice is to say to the students, find the data first. So I want to go back to this research question here. This is a great research question, but it is very, very difficult to find the data, particularly this one here. How can you test whether those individuals with the most elastic demand are paying the highest fare? How can you find that out? 
Unless you're able to get into the airport lounge and interview passengers for that flight, that data is very, very difficult to find. Next thing is that you need to think about with the students how to create the methodology. A strong methodology is a strong extended essay. And that is for students the most difficult thing because I don't have any practice in doing this. So they need to think about how can I create a valid and reliable test for this extended essay. So here's an example. This one here also comes from the extended essay guide. And these are different ways in which students can test whether companies X abuse of monopoly power in the fast food in the fast food industry of country Y. This is my advice with this question is to actually narrow this down to the name of a city unless you live in a very very small country. So that's the topic. The student can narrow it down and then this is the different ways in which they can find the data. This is the different ways in which they can create their methodology. Um, and this is really interesting when we look at sources. So for example, um, the student here needs to find data on the secondary, find secondary data on the positive behavior of country X. And that's probably quite easy to find on, on the company's website. But when they talk about that source, they need to say that that company website will be inherently biased. Of course, the company is only going to report the positive things that they do. They're not likely to report the negative things. So they do need to find another source that might help them and cover some of the negative behavior. And, and that's going to be very challenging. Where are they going to find that information? And one good place is, is definitely newspaper articles. So it's very, very important that when, you, that when you sit down with students, you talk about the topic, you ask the student, can you find the data? Because you absolutely don't want the students to, to start working on an extended essay, get invested in the extended essay, and then discover they can't find the data. That absolutely has to happen first. And then once they know how they're going to get the data, then start creating the methodology. And a strong methodology is a strong extended essay. So just in summary, research questions should be open-ended. They should not be a, a yes or no answer and they should not have an obvious answer. Students should keep away from questions such as, um, it, uh, do the, does the gym industry in my town resemble an oligopoly? If there's only five gyms, it's a pretty obvious answer. So no, that's not an appropriate question. The question shouldn't be double barreled. There should be two parts of the question. The question needs to be narrow and focused. And the question has to be on real world phenomena that has happened in the last five years. So students cannot use, for instance, um, the recession from 2008. That, that's too old. It needs to be something that is quite contemporary. Also for criteria A, they need to think about their sources. They need to be able to, to discuss their sources and to what extent they are reliable and valid. Why they've chosen G nominal GDP over real GDP, for instance. And lastly, the students need to think about their methodology. And the key to a strong methodology is to think, how can I test this economic theory against the real world against real world data, against real world phenomena. I wish you all the best with your extended essay journey and I want to thank you for joining me today.